Let's take a look at the cash receipts journal. And I've drawn this up so that we can try and visualize what it is that we're trying to deal with before we actually get into the detail and the format of the CRJ itself. So obviously we keep on referring to this as the CRJ, the cash receipts journal, and that's fine to, to abbreviate from there. What is it that we actually use this for? The most important thing here is to be, and keep in mind that it is called the cash receipts journal for a reason. This is about all the money, the actual cash that the business is receiving. So we receive cash and predominantly we're gonna deal with two different types of cash or two different ways that cash is received. One is from sales from your, from your till, from your cash register. When we get and when you go to the shops and think about the times you've gone to a shops and you go and you, you cash up at the till and you, you pay at the till, they always give you your little till slip. And you take your till slip and, and off you go. But keep in mind that the company will keep a little till slip for themselves to identify every sale that's been made. So that's their little audit trail. That would be their source document. And we call this a CRR. We call this a cash register role. So what we'll do on a daily basis or what the company will do on a daily basis is take that out of the cash register and identify just how many sales were made on a daily basis. So you'll find that when we deal with the CRR, we deal with the cash register role, they'll always put little numbers next to it and say the, the cash register role one from the first day or from the second till or the first. So we can always keep track of it. So you'll always find in your in your CRJ we'll use the little abbreviation CRR and that is relating to your cash sales that were made through the till. We can, however, receive cash from other places. And when we receive cash from other places in other forms, it doesn't really help us to have a cash register roll because that's not an immediate cash sale. So keep in mind, this is going to deal with all of your cash sales. How else can we get some kind of money in? Up cash comes potentially when your debtor comes in and pays you. <clears throat> So when a debtor pays us, they're going to come in and give us the cash. But I can't record anything on my till slip. I can't record anything on my cash register because otherwise it would duplicate the sale. So that's where I'm going to go and use a little cash receipt book. Obviously, the debtor is not going to give me money without me giving them some kind of piece of paper that says that I have. So we use a cash receipt book. And you'll see the cash receipt book is always pre-numbered. So we're always going to have a little number. And therefore, we'll generally record this as receipt number one, receipt number two, so we can always keep track of that. So if a debtor comes in and pays their account, I want to be able to say we got a hundred rand and that was from receipt number one because a debtor came in and settled their account. There are other reasons that we could receive money as well. What if you gave one of your staff members a loan and they come back and they say, I'm repaying the loan, here's 200 rand, that is still cash. I can't just leave that, I've got to record that. In that case, again, you're going to give that staff member a receipt to prove that they have actually paid that, and now you're sitting with money. So generally, we're going to be dealing with cash that comes from receipts, where we, our source document will be the receipt, or our source document is going to be the CRR, the cash register role. These are generally going to come to the same person. It's going to come to the accountant. The accountant now sits with money. Their responsibility is to record how much cash has been received and where it came from. We always want to control where money is coming and going. If my debtor pays me, for example, I don't want to know that the debtor paid and I've forgotten that he paid because I'm going to send him a statement the next month and say, hey, you haven't paid my account and he's going to start an argument. Yes, I did pay. I was there the other day. I gave you the money. I'm not paying you again. So we're going to be very careful where the money comes from and how we control it. So the accountant must record how much cash has been received and where it came from. And for this, we use our cash receipts journal. And we're going to look at the format just now. We always need to record the date exactly what date did we receive that money on, the details, where did this money come from, what was this money for. Our folio is going to be the reference number for the actual document, the source document. We always want to know that we can trace everything that we do back to the source document. If there's any kind of error or if there's any kind of concern that something's gone missing or something hasn't been dealt with, we want to know that we can go back to the actual receipt book and go and check what really happened. Maybe a number has been pulled through incorrectly or someone forgot got to record a receipt, whatever the case is, we want to know we can trace it back to the source document. So we'll always put some kind of reference in there. 
the bank column we use to show exactly how much money is going into the bank. Whenever I deposit money into the bank, it's going to show up on my bank statement on the bank side. And I would always like to be able to reconcile how much I said I deposited versus how much they said they deposited. So from my side, the accountant is going to deposit 15,000 Rand for the day. And when I look on my bank statement, I want to see that it said 15,000. And I want to be able to tell exactly where that came from. So our next columns are going to indicate exactly where that money came from. So the bank column shows you how much money you're going to be putting in the bank and the next columns are going to show you where that came from. In this case it's either going to be income or from debtors or from some other place. We can see exactly where that money came from. So our cash receipts journals are drawn up in terms of columns and we fill these columns out on a daily basis and then at the end of the month instead of creating general ledger transactions or creating general ledger accounts for every single one of these transactions, we just post the totals to the general ledger. And you can see how much smaller it would be. Instead of posting every single one of these items separately, we only need to post the totals to the bank. We don't have to post every single one of them. So this will allow us to keep track of what we've put in the bank. And once we've deposited the money or deposited the cash into the bank account, we've got to make sure that we can tie this up. At all times, it is our responsibility to make sure that we can keep track of the money that's been received by recording it and depositing it and make sure that these two tie up. Because obviously, that's where the possibility of fraud is going to be. Cash is very easy. It's very easy for it to disappear. It's very easy for people to take it if your controls are bad, if you're not recording where it comes from. So we've got to make sure we know exactly where it comes from. So this is why we have a cash receipts journal. This is where it comes from, our source document, the information. Now let's take a look at how we actually draw this up and how this is going to come up in exams, what we need to do with it.